Peace. What's good? How y'all doing? This is Zaza Ali. Today is Wednesday, February 15th, 2023. I pray that this message reaches you all in the best of health, spirit, and mind, those of you in YouTube land, as well as all of my beautiful members of the membership group. This is going to be an extended version of Headline News, episode 21. Obviously, you guys in the membership channel know I've been MIA for a couple of weeks. Um, in order to avoid doing a 15-minute intro, <laughs> I'm going to discuss that in the next video that I'm going to post. Um, it's actually going to be called, I just wrote it down, uh, Do We Radiate Our Insecurities? And that's a download that I've been processing for the last week and something I had um, like five people out of nowhere book consultations within a two-day uh, timeline. And it was very interesting to see how all of these um, experiences were so related and similar, right? And so with the experience, that particular experience, because that it takes a lot of energy to do those consultations, you know, and to help people get clarity uh, it's actually a transmutation, but within that time frame, that experience, as well as something, you know, these last couple of weeks have been uh, tumultuous for me, but we'll get into that, like I said, um, in the next video, so I can get into this because I have a lot, I have three weeks worth of news uh, to cover within this. This is a little bit more like a presentation than a regular news episode, um, but there's so much going on in the world. And that's another thing that every time when I sat down, like, okay, let me just go ahead and, and record this. There was something so magnanimous happening in the world that it was almost offensive to even, you know, talk without talking about that, right? And I can't just sit down and be talking about stuff that I haven't looked into. So I have three weeks worth of news, normally for a one hour segment. I have between 21 and 23 slides. I have 33 slides total today. And I had to, let me just tell you guys what's on the list that I didn't, that I'm not gonna talk about today. Uh, update with the Tesla, all of the Tesla issues that are happening around the world, not gonna be able to cover that. Um, the footage from the tanks that were in Atlanta, they had these major military tanks going through Atlanta in the, you know, just in case, uh, sort of we're going to be prepared for rioting and looting. Of course, there was nothing even close to rioting and looting. Looting, excuse me. They totally amped that whole situation up because that is a part of the psychological training, uh, mass psychological manipulation uh, and programming that's happened right now to getting people to be obedient and to get used to seeing militarized environments, right? So, Tank footage and ATL, can't cover it too much to talk about today. Sam Smith's uh, whole satanic dance routine at the Grammys and my, Madonna's connection, again, can't talk about it. In the previous headline news, I believe we talked about Madonna being uh, accused of sex trafficking in Africa, right? So it would make sense that these people would be connected. But again, can't talk about it. Too much crazy shit going on in the world. Um, I do have a I think a 15 minute clip though that I am going to upload in the membership channel. This guy did a great uh, synopsis and analysis of it. And, you know, um, yeah, so I'm going to upload that in the hidden in plain sight uh, tab in your library. Uh, Governor DeSantos did a press conference where he explained what his the whole controversy as far as the Black history program and, you know, explaining that his issue was the Black queer element of the uh, anyway, can't talk about it. Too much going on in the world. The black rancher situation in Colorado. He was arrested. These these white supremacists are poisoning this man's cattle. Again, I can't talk about it. But what I am going to do is do a separate video where I'm going to discuss that. And I will put that on uh, YouTube for everybody to see because that is a very critical situation. But again, can't discuss it today. Um, U.S. suicides increase from 2021 to 2022. I definitely think that that is an active a part of this agenda. Talking about frequency wars, again, can't get in it, into it today. Uh, Gita, GPT, they have a new chat going on. Um, 
chat, but also sort of frame of reference program, whatever you want to call it, where artificial intelligence now is speaking to or through or for the Bhagavad Bhagavad. I always sure get it wrong when I say it. Bhagavad Gita, right? So there's this whole new again. I can't get into it. Um, Madonna and the satanic statue and the connection to the Grammys. There's a new statue in New York on top of one of the buildings. I believe it's in Manhattan. That is a uh, supposed to be a, a, fe a female uh, demonic entity. And I've read the whole backstory. I actually was planning on putting it in. I actually had it in the previous report, but can't talk about it. I have too much going on, but I will, I have all of this stuff on my list. So these are all things that I'm going to like pick apart in little pieces and place and put them in the membership channel anyway. So don't worry. I got you. I'm always going to come back and make sure that I plug you guys and always show my appreciation and gratitude for you rocking and, and hanging in there with me. This book is, whoo, okay. Zero Trust Internet Access 2027, can't talk about it. Six-year-old boy raped on school bus, can't talk about it. Um, the whole Damar Hamlin situation, and I was very vocal about that and saying that I think that he died and now all of a sudden he's showing up again. Well, what do you think about that now? Why are you so quiet? Can't talk about it because there's an apocalypse going on. And literally I'm going to try my very best to keep this video at two hours so that I can have part one. Cut it in half. Part one will be available on YouTube as well as the membership channel. Part two will be available in the membership channel. It will be available on demand. Or of course, you can just sign up for the membership channel. And then you have access to all exclusive Zaza Ali content as well as a very extensive library. If you want to know what's going on in the world, that's what I do. I keep my people abreast with what's going on in the world. So Real quick announcement, I want to honor and acknowledge one of our members. I told you guys I'm gonna be doing prizes. I'm already at seven minutes. See, I don't. I didn't wanna do a long intro, but it really is, isn't even an intro. I've been talking about all this stuff, right? Um, Lisa Kelly has been with us in the membership channel since day one. She was the very first person to sign up. So she's been our longest standing member, but I'm not only honoring her because of that. And I hope you don't mind me saying your name publicly, sis, because, you know, it's all out of love. But um, not only has she been the longest active member, but she has. she's also very consistent in commenting and engaging in, in giving her perspectives and also adding extra wisdom on top of that. She always comments on my videos. She's always very just loving and super kind. And I definitely appreciate your energy, sis. And she also emailed me about a week ago and checked in on me. So I appreciate that too. That's like going the extra, extra mile. Um, but I wanted to honor you as our selected member for a, a prize. Uh, and you can go on my website on the store and you can select any one thing, a book or a poster or a workshop, even though I think you have access to all the workshops because you're in the membership channel. But anything that's on my store, aside from ancient people, you can get a copy of for free. I will ship it to you, email and let me know. OK, and with that being said, let's go ahead and get into headline news with Zaza Ali, episode 21. This is a weekly news segment highlighting local, national and global events, particularly those being censored by mainstream media. Headline news with Zaza Ali airs exclusively on the ZazaAli.com private membership channel. And if you would like to sign up for a yearly membership, let me know. I'll send you a link for a 20 percent discount. And. Let me just say this before we get into this subject, because everything I'm going to talk about today is heavy. Everything. Like I, you know, and that's another reason, and I've said this in the membership channel consistently, like it's not just about the information anymore. It's not just about letting people know what's going on. That We need stable frequencies to help us to contextualize all of this madness and this chaos without upping the fear ante. And so I take it very seriously to make sure that my, my frequency, my perspective is stable so that I'm not upping the fear, for, the fear frequency. So sometimes guys, when I sit down and I prep for these headline news and then I, you know, I 
putting it together is one thing that takes a few hours, pulling all the content together, that takes a couple hours, right? But so I'm sitting with it this whole time. I'm taking it in, I'm reading it, I'm typing it, I'm copying and pasting it, I'm watching the videos, I'm trimming the videos. So I'm internalizing all of this information and it's very heavy. So I just wanna make sure my members know, I take it very, very serious to make sure that I'm in the right state of mind in the right space so that we're not magnifying the fear energy. I don't want us to get caught slipping. I don't want, I don't want us to get pulled into the major shock and awe. That I, that I, one thing I won't do is get pulled into the major shock and awe. <laughs> Cause like I said, I sit with this information. I live with this information. Not asking you to sit with or live with it, but I'm asking you to find that balance in the physical and the spiritual aspect of yourself. The physical can deal with the, you know, being emergency prepared and and making sure that you're abreast with laws and you know water shortages, et cetera, the things that are happening on the ground. And the spiritual part is tapping into aligning with maintaining resting assured in having 100% unadulterated faith in the spiritual aspect of yourself, which is the greatest part of you, which is actually connected to God, supreme being, divine consciousness, Allah, whatever your, you know, the universe, the source, whatever your highest and best version of God or consciousness is. You see how I just rolled that off? This is why I got to be in the right frame of mind, you know, because, because when the spirit is is flowing through me, I don't even have to think about it. It just comes through, right? But if I'm, you know, a little vexed over this project that I'm working on, or you know, like waking up to another catastrophe, <laughs> I haven't even processed the one that I heard about last night before I went to sleep, and then I wake up and there's another catastrophe. Like I was reading a report before I even started this earlier today about Arizona and some supposed uh, truck wreck that released a whole bunch of hazardous uh, chemicals in Arizona. And so they're supposedly shutting off. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's a lot. So let's go ahead and get into this. This, this conversation today. These are gonna be very, like I said, tumultuous topics, but at the end, we're gonna end on a high note because that's where God always is in the high vibration and the high consciousness. I'm 13 minutes in, but I haven't been rambling and I haven't been talking about anything that except things are important. So that's, that's, the, that's the goal. All right, let's get into this. Now, what's so interesting to me is that this story runs parallel, exact parallel with what's going on in Haiti. Obviously, there's different, you know, situations in Haiti was a, the gas um, oil uh, at, in terms of natural resource and how that that group of gang, that gang group, we talked about it in headline news. I can't remember the top of the name off the top of my head, but basically a rebel group, a group of gang members um, shut down the entire oil system in Haiti and had Haiti for months without having access to oil. And the military and the law enforcement and the police was not able to do anything to stop this situation. And this is the same thing happening in the Democratic uh, Republic of, the, of Congo right now, where we have this group, the M23 rebel group, that is basically putting a lot of the, the, the um, country, stopping uh, or putting things, bringing things to a halt, excuse me. So uh, I find it interesting that these two situations are running parallel. You guys will remember in, oh, I don't even remember what video it is. Maybe it, it was the Kingdom Within web series where I talked about the situation in R Rwanda and how they used um, frequencies on the people of Rwanda, Rwanda to start the genocide be between the Tutsi and the Hutsi. Uh, tribes and they have sold this whole story of one million people just immediately out of nowhere just going berserk and killing one another well it turns out that there's a lot more to that story so I'm wondering if perhaps through water perhaps through frequency perhaps through 
these different weather modification programs that they're using or just the frequency wars in general, something is happening to these particular areas, not just saying that it's happening only in these two particular areas where there's this radical violent element in the culture that is extreme and attacking the local people without, it doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Like they're not standing up for anything. They don't have an ask. They're not, you know, political prisoners or uh, banging against the system, right? It's just a bunch of radical, violent, militant minded, you know, soldiers without a war. So they're creating a war, right? And so why is this important? Because, pardon me, the Pope just visited the South Sudan. And you know, it's so ironic for me. I'm man, I'm like, I'm living, you talk about parallel timelines as I'm working on this book and I'm, you know, honing in on the Sudan. And I remember studying all these things in, back in college, but honing in on the Sudan and, and the power that was, you know, being generated and how these people were operating at such a, such a high level at a certain period of time and fast forwarding and looking at, at how they decimated the Congo today. I looked through the images of this man's visit to this country and they blot out a lot of the background so that you can't see how desolate and extreme the poverty is. Because as we're gonna read about in just a second, according to this article, <clears throat> Uh, there are 6 million out of, I think the, the total population was 12 minutes, there are a million, there are 6 million Catholics in the Congo. And we're talking about blue black people in the Congo, right? These are the original, original black people, melanin on a thousand. And they are praising and paying homage to and supplicating themselves to this very evil and wicked agenda. Now pay attention to the image in the middle because when I saw this image, I automatically, multiple things. First of all, the all seeing eye is there clear as day with the cross and the you know murder of Jesus, quote unquote, right behind him. So, so emphasizing death. And then he's also sitting in the middle and that background gives the halo effect. The world has forgotten about the conflict in South Sudan, enter Pope Francis. What I was saying though, to make sure I made my point is that in a lot of the images like National Geographic, they had you know, major spreads in, in multiple different um, news, you know, time, National Geographic, et cetera. But the imagery, of the people in the far background, as well as the actual environment were all blotted out because they don't want people to see how extreme the poverty is because there's no way any rational thinking minded human being would see this whole pompous show of, yes, we're powerful, we're mighty. We can come in and shut your whole city down and have everybody on their knees praising our God and paying homage to our evil wicked satanic agenda and there's extreme poverty and we're not giving you anything and we're not promising you anything excuse me and we're not leaving any jobs behind and we're not leaving any resources behind we're definitely going to take some though coltan congo but that's another story for another time so there was much optimism on the streets of judah when south sudan became the world's newest country in 2011 but the euphoria was short-lived as the African country descended into civil war and famine. Now, Pope Francis is trying to raise global attention for South Sudan as he begins a three-day trip Friday to the, to the country as part of a pilgrimage of peace. The Pope's trip, along with Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, Ian Greenshield, is centered around raising awareness about a conflict that has left over 400,000 people dead. The trip is not the first time Pope Francis has sought to urge peace. In 2019, during a meeting in the Vatican, Francis knelt and kissed the feet of Kier and Machar. The Pope has been planning to visit South Sudan for years, but was delayed by security concerns. 
Now, if that happens or not, I am not exactly sure in terms of him kneeling and kissing these, you know, these these particular um, kings or rulers, their their feet. Uh, a part of me wouldn't doubt it because these people know who the real, true, original people of God are. And then another part of me knows that these people lie for a living. So until I see proof, Ed, I don't know. And again, I didn't even, I couldn't really do a deep dive on some of this stuff like I wanted to, because there's just too much stuff to talk about. After a successful visit to the DRC, the Pope arrived in Judah, South Sudan to celebratory crowds. The nation, barely 12 years old, has never welcomed a Western leader, excuse me, on a public visit. So this is major because, you know, they're coming with all of the the, the pop, the pompous, the the huge limousines and the extra security detail and the, you know, the 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 flowers surrounding his open carriage. Whatever carcass. <laughs> Makes sense for me. Um, but there's a lot of pompous and a lot of media and a lot of world global attention, right? So of course, a, a country and a nation that is in extreme poverty and despair is going to look at this entity or this person as a God type figure. The three wise men, as some call Francis Welby and Greenshield, were greeted by tens of thousands of people singing and ululating to celebrate the occasion. Approximately 6 million of Sudan's 11 million people, correction, are Catholic. In the colonial era, Christian mission missionaries in Sudan were divided by the Nile River with Catholics and Angelicans made to preach on opposing sides, according to the New York Times. So uh, this country is in extreme poverty, extreme suffering, and 6 million of them have pledged their allegiance to the Catholic Church. A well-known pedophilic, demonic, satanic, entity, which we're going to get into in just a second. There are currently over 2.2 inter <clears throat> internally displaced people in South Sudan, and 2.3 million people have fled the country, according to UN statistics. I guess being a Catholic isn't assisting. Last year, that was me, not the article. Last year, the country was also found to be the most corrupt in the world by Transparency International. The country faces a number of investigative reports that show how oil revenue worth billions of dollars have disappeared and officials cannot account for the wealth, according to the New York Times. So wait, are you saying that there's actually billion dollars worth of oil revenue available in the Congo? How? What? Who? Who's buying? Who are they selling it to? Where's the... What's the manufacturing element of that? Who's created the... You know, who's generating the oil? Who's pumping the oil? Who's purchasing the necessary tools and resources in order to make the oil accessible? You gotta have, you gotta have major trucks. You got, there's a whole infrastructure that comes with us. What do you mean oil revenue worth of billions of dollars have disappeared? Because who could take it except the people who have put together the infrastructure? And if and and knowing the poverty level of the DRC, I can assure you that it is the Western element between China and Europe and America and all of them together. So they make people, they make the world people think that the people are savages and that the people can't govern themselves, so that when they step in to interfere and to govern because of the insane circumstances that they impose on these people, a lot of you know, psychological, mental, spiritual, physical warfare, scientific warfare in particular, while the Pope's visit went, won't correct these rife issues, it has promoted global conversations by bringing these two nations back in the spotlight. <clears throat> now, When I saw that image of the all-seeing eye and the Pope sitting in the middle of it, the halo effect, the all-seeing eye, you know, the, the emphasizing the murder, uh, all of that, it automatically took me to this image on the right. And the image is not super clear. It Well, it is clear, but because this image is so combobulated and just wicked, it almost looks like it's not clear. You can't tell what you're really looking at unless you take a screen and magnify it, magnify it. So you can Google this picture, it's called the resurrection. 
The resurrection is a colossal sculpture created by Perico Fazzini and measures an impressive 66 feet by 23 feet by 10 feet. Guess what? That measures 666. 66 feet by 23 by 15. Two plus three plus one is six. Six, six, six. And you guys, I am not one of those people, by the way. <laughs> I don't break down numerical equations for every, like, I'm not one of those people. But when I read this, I was like, yeah, it's just, you know, numbers don't lie. And numbers and mathematics are in, uh, um, incorporated into everything. I just think the gematria craze now, like people being able, people explaining everything in numbers and not being able to explain that shit with common sense. Yeah, it's, it's a bit much for me. But this image depicts Jesus rising from the crater of a nuclear bomb in the garden of Gethsemane. What? So you had an endless imagination and could have created any story about this man, anything. And this is what you came up with. So the images of a half man, half lizard, half of this guy, you can see his upper body, his physical torso. Notice how the arms are outstretched in a Christ-like manner, manner, manner representing the crucifixion. Half the face is human, half the face is reptilian. And this is the image that is sitting in the uh, uh, Pope's throne in Rome. The guy who created it said, I had the idea of depicting Christ as if he were rising again from the explosion of this large olive grove, peaceful sight of his last prayers. Christ rises from this crater torn open by a nuclear bomb and atrocious, atrocious explosion, a vortex of violence and energy. I'm sorry, what? Look at the way these people think. They're so destructive. Everything's about destruction. Everything's about chaos. If Jesus died for our sins, why are you putting through him? Why are you putting him through the through another traumatic experience like this? Don't you want to see him thrive? Wouldn't you prefer to see him on a throne somewhere, being able to be recognized and honored for his glory as he should, as have all the prophets? Why do you have to put him in a crater and blow him up again and then put him in this eternal fire with skeletons and all this crazy psychotic looking imagery? He had to go through the fire again in order for you to represent, in order for you to honor him, huh? Because they worship wickedness. They worship suffering. So these are the people that 6 million people in the Sudan are bowing down to, paying homage to, paying tithes to, energetically and monetarily, and they wonder why they're not getting anywhere. But alas, there is more to this story. Two weeks prior to this gentleman's arrival, I don't even know, was I supposed to have this this early on? Hmm. I thought I blotted this page out, but I don't think I did. Okay, so. <laughs> um. CES tar targets the V-shot for over 800,000 in the Sudan against the Charlie Victor David 1-9 catastrophe and lie. Two weeks pr prior to this dude's arrival. The government of Central U Equatoria State is planning to give the V-shot to over 800,000 against the Charlie Victor David 1-9 lie in the second round of the V-shot campaign launched last month. James Wani, the director for primary health care in Central Equatoria State, told journalists on Tuesday in Juba that a total of 814,944 out of 1.8 million people in the state are expected to receive the shot. The number of people fully V'd up in the first round of V shots since 2021 are 235,764. Anthony Kasinga, Kasanga, excuse me, the project director for World Vision, who is World Vision, again, started to go down that rabbit hole, but I don't have time, there's too much to talk about, said they were advised in the Ministry of Health to have standard streamlined national V shot campaigns in the entire country instead of the previous facility based V shots. Now, isn't this ironic? They have money to give you poison, but no money to help you build an infrastructure, not an infrastructure that 
put you in debt for a hundred years. An infrastructure that brings manufacturing and jobs and systems that can help people to progress and get ahead. We know, well, I won't go there, I'm trying to be careful with my words. He said World Vision will be overseeing CVD19 lie shots for greater equatorial for the greater equatorial equatoria region. World Vision implemented similar activities previously in northern Bihar, El Gazelle, Upper Nile, and Warab states. Celestino Ariam, the medical director for Juba County, said wide coverage for the CVD19 shot will provide herd immunity. Isn't that laughable? For our people who have received the first and second dose of A.Z, which is one of the most dangerous, which is the one that they're giving to the people in Australia and seemingly more third world countries, A.Z, you can look at the screen and look at the name. You need also to have the B word, you know, B-O-O-S-T-E-R dose with J and J. We need everybody to have the V shot so that you are fully immunized. I'm not going to go into on this because I'm trying not to get, you know, I think I have one strike remaining on YouTube. I've been so heavily censored that I just, it's just hard to talk about things without talking about it fully. So um, this topic is actually going to come up again at the end of segment two, uh, talking about the school uh, immunization programs that are now in full effect. So we'll get to that later. So this is having a big effect on the city. I mean, you may be enjoying it, but the city's in a different mode. It's it's almost like even Central Park right here. And this is where our meteorologist Danny Beckstrom is right here near Beverly Air Castle. Where, you know, they could be playing softball here on the fields. And Danny, aren't they kind of in more of like a spring maintenance mode than in winter mode? A hundred percent, Lee. It's actually turning into a bit of a problem as crews try to maintain the grounds. Central Park averages about 30 inches of snow per year. Uh, different story this year, right? We've recorded a trace, but that's it. And just that trace of snow without breaking the measurable snow streak is becoming a much bigger story. I love winter. I love winter in New York. Birds chirping, trees budding, and daffodils sprouting on this 50 degree spring like day in New York City in the middle of winter. That's great. I mean, it's, I, I don't even need this coat really. It's really too heavy. Um, I'm doing my <laughs> mask, usual walk in Central Park. Um, it's very comfortable. Comfortable? Yes. Normal? Not even close. January 2023 will likely go down as the warmest January on record in New York City, coming in above average every single day so far. Warm winter weather leading to the other big climate headline, the city's streak of snowless days. And our snowless streak up to 327 days and counting. And in this pattern, really no end in sight. Since records began back in 1869, Central Park has never made it this late in the season without measurable snow. The previous record was January 29th, set back in 1973. And each day moving forward will set a new record until Central Park finally looks a little more like this. Oh, I love the snow and I love to see the kids out playing. And I do think that's important, but... Yeah. Um, I'm not complaining, but yes, I think we all have to be very aware that there's something going on. The lack of snow isn't just a worry for those concerned for our climate. It's also a concern for the Central Park Conservancy. The higher temperatures, meaning higher foot traffic during what should be a slower season, allowing the lawns to rest and recuperate. We have snow on the lawns, so that means the lawns are kind of resting and uh, it's not the grass is dormant. So people don't get there to use them. So that will help. But because we haven't had snow, that opens it up and more people are using it. So that means it's been torn up. The Conservancy is confident their crews will be able to compensate for the lack of snow-induced help this winter by overseeding and aerating. But it does mean a more labor-intensive process to prep for the spring season. So the question on everyone's mind now is, will winter ever make an appearance? You tell me. You're the other, you're the other person. So you let, let me know. <laughs> Yeah, so Joe brings up a good point there. Now, the Conservancy does want to remind people, if you're here enjoying the park, just pay attention to those signs that say, please do not step on the grass. It's trying to recover. And climatologically speaking, New York City has never gone completely snowless all winter long. So at some point, we should see a few snowflakes pile up. Lee mentioned the big cool, cool down on the way as we move into the next few days. But at this point. It's funny, right? It turns out that there are dire consequences and ramifications of allowing these people to shoot and spray 
metal particulates in our upper atmosphere. And later on in the program, I'm going to talk about owning the weather by 2025 uh, when I can speak freely and without having to worry about being censored, but making the connection between what's happening in New York, what's happening in Turkey, and what's happening um, in terms of the, the, the things that we're seeing in the sky. We're going to talk about that in the second half. The left-wing gender insanity being pushed on our children is an act of child abuse. Very simple. Here's my plan to stop the chemical, physical, and emotional mutilation of our youth. On day one, I will revoke Joe Biden's cruel policies on so-called gender-affirming care. Ridiculous. A process that includes giving kids puberty blockers, mutating their physical appearance, and ultimately performing surgery on minor children. Can you believe this? I will sign a new executive order instructing every federal agency to cease all programs that promote the concept of sex and gender transition at any age. I will then ask Congress to permanently stop federal taxpayer dollars from being used to promote or pay for these procedures and pass a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. It'll go very quickly. I will declare that any hospital or healthcare provider that participates in the chemical or physical mutilation of minor youth will no longer meet federal health and safety standards for Medicaid and Medicare and will be terminated from the program immediately. Furthermore, I will support the creation of a private right of action for victims to sue doctors who have unforgivably performed these procedures on minor children. The Department of Justice will investigate Big Pharma and the big hospital networks to determine whether they have deliberately covered up horrific long-term side effects of sex transitions in order to get rich at the expense of vulnerable patients, in this case, very vulnerable. We will also investigate whether Big Pharma or others have illegally marketed hormones and puberty blockers, which are in no way licensed or approved for this use. My Department of Education will inform states and school districts that if any teacher or school official suggests to a child that they could be trapped in the wrong body, they will be faced with severe consequences, including potential civil rights violations for sex discrimination and the elimination of federal funding. As part of our new credentialing body for teaching. Let this dude talk the whole way. It's just like you hear this stuff and it's like, is this real? Are we really like <laughs> reporting teachers that make a child think that they're they were born in the wrong body? Like, is am I in the did I how did I get here? Oh my God. Everything that he said in this video was was worthy of support, was, you know, seems like a good intention, was something that we actually need politicians and people to have a spine to be interested in and to talk about. But do I think that gen that gender, that Donald Trump is actually like a good guy in terms of, you know, he's looking out for children to make sure that they're not victims of this? No because he is simultaneously traveling on campaign dates, doing campaign speeches and promoting the Jim Jones juice and has been promoting the Jim Jones juice since the beginning. So that right there is the litmus test, ladies and gentlemen, for me. I'm not saying I'm against everybody who took it or, or not even everybody, but anybody just because you took it or, but if you're actively promoting it, and you have to know, like he talked about the negative side effects of the surgery. Do you know how many people are, how many millions of people around the world have been extremely negatively physically affected and lives will never ever be the same? A la Damar Hamlin. The question nobody's asking is, will he play again? They won't talk about that because the heart damage, the damage that comes out uh, on the other end of the type of injury and heart attack that he sustained is not fixable. So I'd love to hear him do an interview or somebody actual, uh, actually ask him, hey, is there, or do they think you're gonna get to play again? They haven't brought that up. But this subject in terms of Trump, Trump is controlled opposition 1000%. I am 100% sure of that because look at the things that he comes forward and talks about. It's all hot button issues. 
writing a tweet about Rihanna because he knows that everybody in the world is talking about Rihanna and her Super Bowl performance. Hot button issues, keep the racial dichotomy floating. Keep the transgender left versus right agenda at the forefront. Just keep the people dancing, keep the sheep traveling along the path right towards their death and destruction and keep them entertained in the process. I don't believe anything this dude says. So this flag on the right, tying this back to what Trump is talking about, and I kept seeing this flag. I've seen this flag a couple of times in person, maybe somewhere here, Long Beach, I'm thinking, or Long Beach has a Pride Month where they just have you know rainbow flags everywhere. And I think that I may have seen this in person but I've seen it several times on TV and I was watching a reel, a clip of Deion Sanders. He was at a store buying a, a mountain bike. It looked like it was, you know, maybe one of those 60 second reels. He was buying a mountain bike in this store. And as he's walking through the store, I see this flag, this flag on the right. And so immediately click back in my sub subconscious mind. So I go to my computer and I pull up LGBTQ flags. And so there's, I don't even, I lost count. I didn't, I didn't even count. There were that many of them. I was totally amazed. But the thing that interests me about this particular flag and that breakdown of all of those flags is for another day, but it's definitely something that I want to actually sit down and do because the psychosis of every individual group, so to speak, psychosis and don't take, you know, don't start throwing your, your, <clears throat> proverbial insults in all caps because you think I'm saying some, something offensive because of your lifestyle choices or the way you live. This is much bigger than just you and your sexuality. I'm gonna say that again. This is much bigger than just you and your sexuality. So we're all on this planet together. <laughs> and these people are targeting children, which is why I'm talking about this in the first place. Because I'm at, as I'm looking at this image, I automatically see the rainbow aspect, the LGBTQ. I automatically see the brown and the black representing the whole you know, race, racial harmony and uni unity dichotomy. But the pink and the blue and the white is what I was curious about. Because you know, pink and blue are synonymous for boy and girl. And so when I lo looked, these flags up. I'm going to read this to you. I'm going to read them both. The one on the left is the transgendered flag, which by the way, this is another thing that I didn't have enough time to talk about. <clears throat> Rihanna posted images of her and her baby on her Instagram page and probably all of her sites, but she tagged the photographer. And because I saw how dark the vibe of the pictures was, normally people don't when, it, when you do a photo shoot as a new mom, it's usually a little bit more light and airy and, you know, and it's Rihanna, she's got that whole sexy, dark element to her, her vibe, but the images just struck me as really, really dark. Coming off the tail of her Super Bowl performance, which that's another story, again, don't have time, but that red and white color dichotomy of the man's t handmaiden's tail keeps playing itself out. As we've talked about in previous headline news segments from Kendrick Lamar to The Weeknd to So the Progress Pride flag, which is the one on the right, which is the one that I'm talking about I kept seeing, given the evolving nature of the LD LGBTQ plus community and society at large, the Progress P Pride flag, excuse me, integrates many of these flags into one. Thankfully, it has been redesigned to place a greater emphasis on inclusion and progression. Our community is such a huge umbrella of different kinds of people that it is made up of special, that it is what, that is what has made it special. That is what makes us so unique and that is what makes us powerful. So that's the explanation for the progress pride flag. There's actually an, another, uh, an extra, let me see, is it on the next page? No, it's not. Okay, so there was an extra, extra explanation that talked about the blue and the pink and the white representing the transgender community, right? So the transgender flag says, 
The transgender flag was first created in 1999 by Monica Helms, a transgender woman. Light blue and pink are featured because they're the traditional colors associated with baby boys and baby girls respectively. I'm sorry, what? Light blue and pink are featured because they're the traditional colors associated with baby boys and baby girls respectfully. Now, even the respectfully to me is insulting because this is an actual, like, this is you, this is an article. Don't say respectfully, say why. We're talking about children and sexuality, and you've just mentioned both of those things in the same breath. So keep the respectfully and explain what it is that you're actually saying and why you're referencing baby boys and girls not just boys and girls, but baby boys and girls and transgender. What does one have to do with the other? It's very creepy and deceptive. And even people in the LGBTQ plus community should be offended and should be alarmed and should be calling this shit out. There's a lot of weird shit. And I know there's a lot of LGBTQ people that agree with me because they follow my content and they write me and tell me that they don't agree with a lot of stuff that's going on in this community. Transgender people have a gender identity or gender expression that differs from the sex that they were assigned at birth. According to Amnesty International, which is another one of Satan's projects, 1.5 million transgender people live in the European Union, making up 0.3% of the population and more than 1.4 million trans adults living in the US which is about 0.5% of the population. Violence against the queer community affects trans people of color the most. Therefore, the transgender flag is important. The trans community needs representation and resources to be visible without fear. I'm not gonna address any of that. I wanna know why are baby boys and baby girls referenced and why are the predominant colors that represent the flag In, in reference to baby boys and baby girls. I need answers. Can somebody please let me know in the comments if you, know, if you are identify as transgender or if you have someone that's in the culture, in the community, please help me understand. And I'm not looking to justify this because I really don't care what the explanation is. It's, it's But I would like to understand at least the the mind the thought process behind it because when I think of transgender, I think of bold colors. I think of vivid living out loud. I think of boldly expressing yourself, being yourself. That's not meant to be a stereotype or a generalization. I don't think pink and blue is the point. Church of England says gender neutral terms, put my vibration music back on, Church of England says gender neutral terms for God are up for discussion. The Church of England is considering whether to stop referring to God as he, after priests had asked to be allowed to use gender neutral terms instead. The church said it would allow, it would launch a new commission on the matter in the spring. Any potential alterations which would mark a departure from traditional teachings dating back millennia would have to be approved by Synod, the church's decision-making body. Synod is another one of those, I made a note of that, but I don't have time to go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I'm down too many rabbit holes right now. The Reverend Dr. Michael Ipgrave, Bishop of Litchfield and Vice Chair of the Liturgical, Liturgical Commission responsible for the matter said the church had been exploring the use of gendered language in relation to God for several years. After some dialogue between the two commissions in this area, a new joint project on gendered language will begin this spring, he said. This is all about keeping people confused because the further you involve yourself in all of these different di divergent labels, new modern representations, new books being written about new programs, all this new, 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 moving you further away from the center of yourself and who you really are. That's what it's all about.
A spokesperson for the Church of England said, this is nothing new. Christians have recognized since ancient times that God is neither female or female, yet the variety of ways of addressing and describing God found in scripture has not always been reflected in our worship. Yeah, that's because you went into Africa and you saw these images of kings and queens and also these images of animals being edified and different spiritual theologies and you didn't know how to interpret them and then you came and raped and pillaged and killed the men and took the women and made a new type of children but you never had the keys to unlock the wisdom of what was really being taught what was really being lived so yes you might have a black madonna multiple black madonnas within the cathedrals of rome that you bow to and kiss the feet, like you probably kiss the feet of those Sudanese leaders, even though that doesn't really mean anything. It's a nice gesture. It sounds good in a book when you're reading about history. It makes it sound like one's more powerful than the other, but we know that's not the case. Still, they still desecrate and, and demoralize and subjugate women all over the world. And, are, and all of their institutions do the same. So paying homage to a black Madonna doesn't really mean anything in the bigger scheme. We, we It might have historical relevance. Gender neutral terms for God. This, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing righteous about any of this. There's nothing righteous in these people. Everything that they're doing now is to move you away from the center of yourself, which is where God is. Everything. It's like you, a part of me wants to go into the whole, you know, why referencing man, God is man versus, you know, God is woman or versus non pro. It's like even going into the argument, should we use pronouns or not? It's not even worth the time right now with what's with the magnitude of what's going on. These are conversations that lead to nowhere. That's what the whole media, the whole news system, the whole the whole media social system is about. Conversations that lead you to nowhere, that get nothing done. A bill filed on Beacon Hill has made national headlines to allow people who are incarcerated to participate in organ donation. 22 News State House reporter Ellen Fleming brings us the legislation and the controversy surrounding it. A new bill would allow prisoners to donate bone marrow or organs for a reduced sentence. Some say it will save lives, others think it's extreme. The bill was filed this session by Representatives Carlos Gonzalez and Judith Garcia. If a prisoner gave a donation, their sentence would be reduced between 60 days and a year. When Representative Garcia tweeted about the bill, it was immediately criticized by her followers for being coercive and disgusting. According to Garcia's tweet, there is currently no pathway for a prisoner to be able to provide a donation, and this bill would create that. Prisoners Legal Services is concerned with the legislation. They said in a statement, we acknowledge the issues that the bill sponsors are trying to address, but are concerned regarding the potential for coercion and impact of inadequate medical care in carceral settings. We believe the solution must target the underlying structural problems leading to health disparities. But Representative Carlos Gonzalez believes this is about equity, saying, we must provide every person who is incarcerated with the guidance of medical experts and advocates in order to ensure them the same rights and opportunities that every individual in Massachusetts has to save the life of their mother, father, brother, sister, child, or friend. According to Gonzalez's office, two out of three white people find a bone marrow match, whereas people of color have less than a 50% chance of finding a match. Gonzalez said he is open to discussions regarding the reduction of time and if that part of the bill is appropriate. Working for you at the State House in Boston, Ellen Fleming, 22 News. I mean, talk about organ harvesting. And this was so, what's so hypocritical about this is that a person donating an organ and getting a reduced sentence doesn't have anything to do with whether or not they were reformed. 
doesn't have anything to do with them paying their debt to society or, you know, inflicting justice or the family of, or the victims receiving justice, right? It's like listening to this and listening to these people talk, the news commentators, the, you know, the specialists, the doctors, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. That's, and that's why it's important for us to talk about this stuff. That's why it's important for us to look these people dead in the, dead in the eyes so we can see what they're capable of because acknowledging what they're capable of, that's how we recognize what they're not capable of. These people are not capable of love. They are not capable of righteousness. And mind you, we don't even know what the statistics are. Somebody needs to do a full study in terms of prisons and these over the last two years, these inoculations, because we don't know what's been happening in there. <laughs> You talk about not having not having a right to choose or be compliant. What's the status of the Massachusetts prison industrial complex and the number of people who have taken the Jim Jones juice? I'd really like to know. If you're there and you can compile that information, it would be wonderful for us to have that. Maybe there's a low number of statistically of incarcerated people and maybe that's intentional because those organs now Organs of people who have not taken the Jim Jones juice have a significant higher value in this timeline moving forward. That shouldn't be shocking to you. Everybody should know that by now. Everybody hopefully watching that continuously watches my content knows that it is not, shit is not safe in these streets right now in terms of if you haven't taken the shot and how you engage and interact people who have. Everybody should know that it's very dangerous and potentially, oh, I'll just emphasize dangerous for you to be having sexual relations with somebody who has taken that inoculation. But that's another story for another time. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Colorado avian flu spreads to a black bear and mountain lion, raising fears of broader reach. The bird disease has wiped out millions of domestic chickens and thousands of wild waterfowl, waterfowl, but is now crossing over into other animals. Now, let's read this because this is this this is how you know these people aren't even trying to convince you of anything. They're just saying shit. The bird disease has wiped out millions of domestic chickens and thousands of wild wild waterfowl. Why wouldn't you show a picture of millions of chickens and thousands of wild waterfowl? Why did you show the image of one bird standing over one dead bird surrounded by feathers? If it's true. When I put these presentations together, when I when I like the the, the images supplement the point. The books, the book I'm working on now, the images prove the point. So the description of this image says a female adult Northern barrier feeds on one of at least five dead birds, at least five dead birds. Oh my God. Found in the ice, found on the ice at Streams Lake near Broomfield on January 4th, 2023. It's not clear if these dead birds had avian flu. Then why are you showing the picture? <laughs> Scenes like these and the potential for spreading the devastating virus are playing out across Colorado wildlife officials and raptor watchers say so why wouldn't you represent that in an image then they're just telling people anything and people and they're doing it because they know that there's no critical thought happening in this country anymore colorado's worst ever avian flu outbreak has crossed over into more mammals including a black bear put down in Hoyerfano, hope I'm saying that right, county and a mountain lion found dead in Gunnison County, state wild officials said Thursday. Why wouldn't you put an image of them in the article? This was the image in the article. I don't believe anything these people say. For all we know, it's all a lie. While the number of mammal cases of the bird spread flu remains low, Colorado Parks and Wildlife said, 
The recent deaths confirm national warnings that the massive current outbreak will have an impact beyond domestic chickens and wild waterfowl, which we haven't seen yet. You said it, but you haven't proved it. More than 6 million chickens have been killed on commercial egg farms in Colorado during the latest outbreak, which accelerated in the spring and fall of 22, 2022. Again, why wouldn't you put images of that in the article? Thousands more wild birds have been killed by the fast working disease, including large flocks of snow and Canada geese near Eastern Plains reservoirs. A handful of raptors have also been felled by the disease, including bald eagles, which total only a few hundred nesting pairs across Colorado. Really, how do you know? This people, this is the, I do these, I read these articles and I look into them because we need to program, we not even program ourselves. We need to learn how to think for ourselves. When you out in the world, being able to have that discernment to see some fuckery before it ever even reveals itself. I can look at this article before I even read it and tell, I can look at the image that they show and tell that it's a lie. Because if you had proof, you would show it. You in the business of scaring people anyway. Now to a change coming to your grocery store. There are new rules. Of By the way, I'm at one minute, the one minute mark. So I'm going to timestamp this right now. Um, the second hour of this episode will be available on my website, zazali.com. You will, you can watch that on demand and you can also watch it uh, by joining my membership channel. If you'd like to save 20% on an annual membership, hit me up, info at zazali.com. And let's go ahead and get back into this.